ओके सो ओके सो इफ देर इज एनी वन हियर फॉर द क्वेज टूडे वी डोंट हैव अ क्वेज एज वेल सो फील फ्री टू लीव इफ यू वुड लाइक टूडे वी डोंट हैव अ क्वेज सो इफ यू जस्ट केम फॉर द क्वेज वी डोंट हैव अ क्वेज फील फ्री टू लीव I don't disclose this. We are at the end of the semester. You should know, right? <laughs> okay. The other thing is for those who uh, didn't have a chance to to come last week to see their midterms, and they still want to see it. Today I'll be available from uh, three to five in my office. If you would like to see your midterm, come by at my office. It's uh, ITB 318A. Uh, you can see your midterm between three to five. Okay. As I said before, because I still receive these emails for the final, it's one third C, two third job. Is that clear? How many questions in the exam? I don't answer these questions. Okay. It, it doesn't really matter for you. It's a number of questions that is enough for you to. Uh, To solve in two and a half hours. Yeah. Today from three to five. Uh, ITB three eighteen A. If if this is my office, if if you don't remember this, look into lecture zero. I already have this information there. Okay. Is that good? What else? Uh, I also got email emails regarding the lecture recordings on YouTube. I have uploaded all of them except one, which I'll, I'll do today. So I guess right now the channel is up to date with all the lectures we had before, except one. Uh, what else? Uh, after we finish linked lists, which I hope we do today, or in worst case on Wednesday, uh, I'll start doing some reviews for Java and maybe one lecture for C. So the remaining ones will be reviewing solving problems. I guess this will be helpful for you guys, right? So. Uh, Also, if while you are studying, make sure you put any question aside. If you have a question regarding a topic, maybe also during these lectures, I can answer these uh, these questions or these concerns. Um, so, linked lists will be our last topic, and then I'll start reviewing uh, the material, mainly job we can see. Uh, what else? There was one remaining thing. We don't have tutorial next Friday. Uh, Because there is no tutorial next Friday, because I'll be doing the reviews during lectures, so there is no tutorial next Friday. Is there any other question? How to prepare for the final? I said this in one of the lectures, but I guess if you didn't, if you weren't here, or because I got like three, four emails regarding the same topic. The way, if I were you, the way I approach this course, or in fact any other course in, in my engineering undergrad, is I'll take them topic by topic. So you see, we have we split our lectures into topics, right? One topic can be one lecture or two or three or four, based on how uh, how detailed is the topic itself. Good. So you take it one topic at a time. Make sure you understand the concepts first, because this is what is important. Before solving any problem, make sure you understand the concepts from the slides. The slides are detailed. They include everything we had discussed in this course. So make sure you cover the concepts. If if you don't understand anything, put a mark. Make sure you understand it. Ask about it in the office hours. But at least you know what you don't understand. After you cover the concepts of, of one topic, make sure you solve the problems, or the examples, or the exercises we have in the slides of this topic. Right? For example, during any lecture, we discuss a concept and then we go ahead and either have a detailed example or. A good part, something that covers this concept. Make sure you can write this yourself by hand, because one of the problems you guys faced in the midterm, I believe, is you didn't try to solve problems with your hand. You could in the lab, we could in quizzes using your laptop. But in your laptop, you have syntax checking. Uh, like if if you forgot something, maybe the compiler, some compilers will allow you to say, oh, you forgot like a semicolon here, or forgot like a bracket here. But even if you don't have this. The psychology itself of writing on a laptop, coding on laptop, and coding on paper—they are different, right? And they don't want to encounter something new in the exam. 
the exam is paper and pen, right? So make sure you are able at home to write the examples on paper and pen. This is at the end, what is going to happen at the, at the final, right? This was very practical. If I, like, if I was able, I would make the final, like, also coding on your laptop, but this is how it works, right? So make sure you are able to code on paper and pen. Think in paper and pen how to write code. So this will save you time and effort and energy in the exam. You will be less stressed if you are familiar with writing code on paper in the exam. So for every example we have in the lecture of each topic, make sure you solve it by, by your hand before looking into the solution. And then compare the solution with what, 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 with what you have, whether it's different, the same, what is different, how it's different, whether you have wrote this correct or not, what you missed. These things, while you are studying, you give yourself a chance to test yourself before the final itself, right? So it's very helpful. After you do this, after you solve the exercise in the lecture, then you have Brax problems, you have even online progr programs anywhere. Like programming is one of the things that is very easy to find problems to solve, right? You have the lab questions as well. Uh, I used to post questions, exercise questions for C, but I didn't do for Java. I try to do this maybe today or tomorrow uh, to also give you some taste of what are some example problems you guys are supposed to, to be able to solve. But in general, we covered most of the, of the things, so you should be able to solve any problem. Good? Is there any question? Yeah? Good? Okay. So last time, we covered linked lists, but we didn't uh, write any code, so it was purely theoretical, which I don't like. So during this lecture, let's try to implement things ourselves. Good? So we will start. I changed, I changed the, the name of the class to make sure we align with the lab. So if you downloaded the slides last time, I have, I have, I have updated them today. You guys make sure you, you download the new version. And then let's start by implementing the node, the node class. So what do we do here, right? We said a linked list is a chain of entities that we called nodes. And we said a node is somehow very similar to an entry in an array. But it's different in the sense that it can include multiple members because it's a class at the end, right? One member is the value that you want to store. The other member is the link to the other node because a linked list is different than an array that different nodes are not connected in the memory. If you have one access to a node, you don't have access to the other one unless you have a link from this node to the other node. That means in a certain node, you have to have a value and a link to another node to construct your chain or construct your list. Good? This is why it's called, it, this is why it's called linked list. You have a list that is linked by links that we call uh, references in Java. In C, you can call them pointers, but it doesn't really matter. This is how you implement it. But the concept is the same, which is a link between a class and another class, right? So let's start by implementing one node. So guys, open your like online compiler, your, your laptop compiler, and, and write this class. This is a class of a node that has only the value and the link to the next node, and we, here we have a constructor that initializes these two values. You should just take one minute for this, right?
Okay, so it should be done. Then now what we have done is one node. We want to construct our, our list, right? That has multiple nodes. One question that I have for you is, what should I do? Assume that now I'm going to create a class that is called list and it's going to use the class node. What do I need extra than the node to have my list? It's like hard question, not clear. Now I constructed a class, yeah, that is called node. I want to create a list using this class. What should I do? A set, yeah, let's, let's for now don't use any of the uh, collection library from, from job. Like we want to create our own thing. We're not going to import a set or like uh, even a linked list or a list. We are building everything from scratch, right? So I want to create a class that I call linked list. What should I, what should I do? We have done this last time, right? We created a list last time even without creating a linked list class, yeah. Yeah, you want to make a head. It's not, it's not necessary, but this is what you generally do, is you make a head, and then your linked list class is nothing other than a head, and a node, right? If you have access to the head, and we said this last time, if you have access to the head, you have access to all the nodes in your list. Why? Because once you have the address of the head, the head has the next, and then the next, and the next, 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 until you find the tape, right? So by just having a head and your node, you actually have a list, and the head itself is a node, right? Good? So, Cover this last time. And then if we create, given that we have this, if we want to create a class that we call singly linked list, SLL, what you just need is you want to have a head, which is a reference of type LL node, because it's, it's a reference to a class of type node. And then that's it, right? Simply, that's it, right? Whatever we add later in this, in, in this lecture is just an additive helping method, right? Like how to traverse it, how to delete an element, how to add an element. But a list is nothing other than you just have a head. What is an array? If you have the array name, you have access to the array, right? If you have the head of a list, you just have access to the list itself, right? So a very simple linked list is just you have a head of a type LL node and that's it, right? So uh, would you please like create this class for now, like 30 seconds, add this single line. And then we will add into this later. So by just having this, we didn't do much, right? We created a list, a linked list, but a linked list, we said it's a data structure that is implementing an abstraction data type or abstract data type, but what do I do with this, right? By just having this, you don't have any methods that help you do some operations in your abstraction data type, right? Remember, we said you have an ADT, which is a list. You implement it using different ways by just defining an array, Right? You can write a function that traverses the array, add an element, remove an element, and this is very easy in array. Right? But in linked list, you want to provide the methods inside the class that help the user of this linked list to implement whatever he wants to implement to his abstraction data type. Right? If I want to add an element to a list, if I want to remove something, if I want to traverse it, searching for an element, all of these things are done for any data structure. And this is a very important thing to know. Right? especially for your TSI afterwards. One of the very basic operations for any data structure is you want to create an element, right? Because initially your data structure is empty. You want to remove an element. You want to search for an element, right? These three things are, are the very basic uh, operations or methods or functions 
that you are going to add to any data structure. Good? Traversing, which is searching, looking for an element, uh, adding an element or removing an element. Good? Otherwise, it makes no sense. The data structure is not very helpful anyway, right? You don't have these three, at least, right? We have so many other things, but this at least the, the three basic methods that you have in any data structure. So let's implement them, right? So let's start by traversing a single linked list. Now we have this class. We want to write a method that, to traverse it. What should we do, right? I can write a method that is not an instance method of the SLL class or the node class. And, and take, take a second to think about this, right? Now we have two classes. One is a node. One is our single linked list, right? And then if I'm going to write a method, you have multiple options to implement your method. I can implement my method as an instance method or a member of the node or a member of the linked list class or what is the, diff what is the third option? Is there a third option? I'm saying you can write your method in your node class, your linked list class, or if there is an or, what do you think? Yeah, yeah your main, or like in general, a standalone method. Right? A method that is not part of this class, right? What determines which one you should do, right? You should also ask yourself this kind of design or decision question. Should this be part of node, part of the linked list, or part of your test class or main class, right? So let's see if I'm, if I'm implementing this as part of the main, for example. What should happen? I want to traverse the list. First, you need your head. Right? You need the start of the list, your head, and then go through the elements one by one using the next thing. Right? So you read uh, a node, which is your LL node. I, I call this here, call it anything. And then by just having the here, you check. If your here is not null, what does it mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's. It, it's not the one after the tail, because the tail is not, is not null, right? but the tail next is null. That means you still have something to traverse. So if it's not null, that means it has a value, and then now we do something with it. What we do here is we bring the value, right? Another thing, if you are searching for a certain value, you would take, let's keep this for now, and then you will do later, but here what we do is we just bring the value of the here, good? And then after I printed the value of my current node, I'm still traversing, right? So what should I do? Go to the next one, do the same thing, if it's not null, right? So why here we say here equal here dot next, right? Remember, here is nothing other than a temporary uh, node object that holds the current node, right? A better name for here can be current as well. This is the node that you are in right now. Once you move to the other node, this is why we change here, right? Say here is here dot next, because once you printed the value of the current node, you go to the second one, you move your here, and then you print it, and then you move, you move, you move, right? And then that's it. So now, the question that I, I had to you is, you would write this as an instant method of LL node class? We had three options. So let's decide which one should work, right? First of all, is it possible to write this as an instance method of LL node class or not? it's legal or allowed or not, and then we see whether it's the better option or not. Can you write your method? Yeah. Yes, why yes? Why it's allowed? How you do this? Okay, what you are saying is, is actually correct. So take two minutes, try to write this method as a member method or an instance method of your node class. You guys right now have the node class and they have the linked list class, right? Write this method as part or an instance method of your node class. See how it would change.
Anyone done? Yeah? None? So how will you do it then? Like what, what did you write? Exactly the same thing. And then you take this also as an input. But then if, if this is a member method of your node class, why do you need ll node here as an input? Wouldn't you just use this without passing any input? Yeah, if you if you make it static, then it's different, right? But in general, if if we implement this as an instance method of your node class, then you don't need to pass uh, to pass a node as an input, right? Right? We discussed this in our circle and a point class, if you remember. If you implement an instance method of a class, then you can use your current class as this, right? We had a this lecture. And in this case, you don't need any input here. Make sense? How I would write this, I'd say while, and then maybe I define here another uh, auxiliary temporary uh, reference that I call, let's say LL node here equal, maybe I just do something like this. I just remove this input. Here I add a line that may be just my auxiliary tem. I can still call it here, it doesn't matter. And then here I say tem equal this, right? And then let's let's call it here in order not to change the code. It's here. Then you continue everything the same, right? You don't need an input here because you made your passing parameter, which is here, equal your this. Right? It's still legal and you can do it. But there is one problem with this implementation. Yeah? Not necessarily you, you bring one node, right? Because even the current node that you are in right now, it has an exit. Right? So you can still traverse. So it's not that extreme, but there is a similar problem here. What is the problem? Remember that what we want to do here is to traverse the whole list, right? Now you are starting from a certain node and then moving towards until you find a null, right? This is correctly traversing the whole list only if what? Yeah? Yeah. Only if this node that you are referring to as this is your head node, right? Otherwise, if it's any point in the middle, any node in the middle, you are going to traverse from this node to the end, right? But whatever is before, between the head and the current node, is not going to be printed. Make sense? Yeah? And this takes us to the other question is, maybe then it's better to, as a node, you don't have a notion of head. You only know yourself. And what is next? You remember this? We discussed this uh, on Thursday, last lecture, right? As a node, once you have access to one node, you have access to everything afterwards. But you don't have access to something that is before, for a single linked list, right? But I want to brand everything, I want to traverse everything. Then maybe it's better to have it as a member of your whole linked list, not just your node. And this is the point of having, even as simple as having our linked list as only one line of code that has the head, it's beneficial, right? Because now you have the notion of what is the start of your list. And maybe now it's better to add this method as part of your full data structure, linked list, rather than having it as an instance method of your node, right? Then, if I want to write this as an instance method of my linked list, how I would do this? Can you write it? Take one minute to write this method as an instance method of your linked list class, which is this one. We have this class extended by adding a method to traverse your linked list.
Is anyone done? Anyone say how we would do this as an instance method of linked list for a bonus mark? Exactly. But you just change one word here, right? Which is, instead of having here equal this, now you have your head, right? So here equal head will make it a perfect instance method for your current linked list, right? And why head is known? Because head is an instance member of your linked list class. Any instance method has access to all the instance fields or variables or members of the current class, right? You just write exactly this function without any input and then change this line to be here equal head. And then you are done because you are starting from your head and going until you find the null, right? Is there any question here? Good. So let's see how we, we traverse it one by one. So Assume I'm starting from my head here. What you would do is we define, and this is assuming that uh, regardless whether it's the, like the, the instance method of the node or the, the, in the main or part of the linked list, the concept is the same, right? You want to start from the very beginning to why you make your here equal your head. Then each time you take the value, you print it, and then you move to the other one. You take the value, you print it, and then you move to the other one until you encounter a null. If you encounter a null, then you are done. Make sense? Now you see the benefit of having the last node, your stamp of having a null at the end, right? It's a way of telling any operation on this linked list to stop when you encounter this null, right? Is there any question? Good. So let's move to the second operation, which is inserting an element into a node. Right? One problem with insertion is what we discussed before, is you can insert multiple positions. I can start at the beginning. Right? You have your linked list. You add your element at the beginning, which is easy. Or you add your element at the end, which is also easy. And the harder one is to add an element in between, right? after a certain value. Right? So let's, let's see one of the first easy ones. That you want to add an element as at the beginning of your list. What do you think I should do? V very easy operation, yeah. So you create a node, this first step. And then you create a link to the next node. What is the next node? The previous head. And then you move your head into your current node, right? You just do th these three same steps, right? Which is you create a node. But once you create a node, which is an object of the node class, it has nothing to do with the list at all. It's just a node in the empty space, right? A node on its own. You want now to connect it to your list. How you do this? First of all, you want the next of this node to be the current head, because it's going to be added before the first element. And then, now your node, your previous head is not the actual head. There is a node before it. Then you move your head, right? So here, this method is written as it's part of the main. It's part of the standalone method. That's why it takes an input, a value, and your old front, which is your head, right? And then what it does, it creates a node with the value. Your next would be your head. Maybe you call your old front a head. I guess it's consistent with what we do, right? Of this head, I'm going to your head. Right? So if you just do this, you take your 
head as an input, which is a node thing. And then you take a value, you create a new node that has the value, and its next is the head. And then you just return this, this node, right? One problem with this is this is a standalone method, right? That returns just another node, right? But now the node that you are in right now is your front. That's why it, access, it has access to the full list, right? What I'm saying, what I'm claiming, this is not the best way of even writing a standalone method to add something to the front of a list. What do you think we should change here? First of all, what do we do here? Make sure you understand correctly, right? I'm taking a head as a node, a value that is going to be added as the new node, right? I create a node in the space that has the value, and then its next would be the head, right? Good. And then I just return the new node that I created. What do you think I should change here to make it better, better coding? Or this is functionally correct, right? But it doesn't make any use of our linked list class, right? It just uses your node class. Okay. What do you think it's better to change in this method? We will keep it as an instance method, but we we'll change it, yeah? You can, you can make your head as your new, new node, right? But the problem with this, yes, this is one step towards being right. But if I have just, if I have just done this, like by saying head equal new node, then what? Then I, what is even head? Head is just a node. Okay? So what else I should change to make it comprehensive towards your thinking, right? Would you say this again? You take in a list as an input? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. This is what you would do, right? And instead of passing your head as a node, in fact, we created our linked list class with only a single member that is head to define a list. So instead of passing a node, you can pass the list itself. Right? So you can just write here. That's your, you know, I like. And this is going to have create a node. This would be your list dot head. Then now your my list dot equal. Yeah, I just return my if I. So this is, how, this is how you should study, right? You should look into the code and think of how you'd implement it, how to write in a different way. Otherwise, you will never understand these concepts, right? These concepts abstractly are hard to understand, but if you code them, you will start understanding them. So what I have done here, right? As he said, we just defined the linked list class to have a list, right? So why I would pass a node that I call a head? Maybe I just pass a linked list that I call my list, and then do exactly what I've just mentioned. Create a new node by the value that you want to change, which is the value here. And then make your next as the old head, which is your next here is my list dot head. And then this should be small, but that's okay. And then you update the head to be the new head. So my list dot head should equal new node. And then whether you return your list node doesn't matter, right? Is there any question in this code? Is it hard to think about? There are many things you can do here, right? Maybe I can give you this code in the exam and ask you, 
write it in a different way, right? Uh, something similar to what I've just mentioned right now. If I give you this code and then say, this is an instance method, what should you do if you write it, if you write it as uh, a method that takes as an input a list? And then maybe the other question that I have afterwards is, come on, what if I, I want to write this method What if I want to write this method to be an instance method of our linked list class? How this should change? Can you take a minute to write it down in your linked list class? I want this method. This now is a standalone method in a main, for example. Write this method to be an instance method of your linked list class. Right? I'm moving too slowly in this topic. That, that's okay if, if you get the concept. Can someone say what we should change here? Yeah? You don't want to pass the list, right? Because you are already in your list right now, you only need the value. Right? And then what else should we change? Yeah, but I can just say head, right? You don't, you don't even need to say this or anything. You can just pass the head here, and then the head will be equal to the new node, right? Is that clear? Yeah? Yeah. You don't want to re return anything, that's correct. And then. Yeah, this would be just void and then you turn nothing, right? Is that clear? Good? Okay. So maybe make sure you guys understand what we are saying. As if I write this as an instance method of our SLL class, it will be just like public void, whatever. And then you only need to take the value as an input. You create the new node, your next would be your head, you update your head to be your node, and then you don't return anything. Right? Is there any question here? Okay. So now comes the harder part, right? I want to insert a value or a node to our left, but in the middle, right? After a certain node. So that means we do two steps, right? First, you need to traverse to the node you are looking for, and then insert after it, right? In fact, I can refactor this code to utilize which function or method we have just written. We already implemented a traverse method, right? That you can just use here to traverse, right? But anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking a target, which is the target I'm looking for. You can think of this as an int, because we implemented our node to be an integer linked list. So it should be just int. We're making here object just to be generic to take anything, but it doesn't really matter. And then what we do here is, so we take your target. What is a target? This is the node that you want to insert after, right? And then you take a value that you want to add as the new node. Then you go through your list one by one, and you check your value, right? If your value equal to what you are looking for, which is your target, that means this is the node that you are in right now, right, that you want to to add afterwards, good? Then you create your new node. What would be your next? So we need, do we have an image for this one? 
Yeah, so let's, let's see an animation first to make sure we understand what's going on. Assume I want to add this node after two, right? After this node. What do you think I should do, right? First of all, you will always create this node. So whether you do this inside the loop or not, it doesn't matter. So we created our node here, but again, just in the space. We didn't attach it to our list yet. Then I go through this list, traverse it one by one until I reach the node that I want to add to. This is the traversing part, right? Now let's go to the insertion part. So this is the important one. This one should go here in between two and three. If you don't do the steps in the correct order, you destroyed your list. Why you think this is the case? If I didn't do the insertion in the correct, in the correct order, I destroy my list. Exactly. If you lost this link, then you are done, right? Because nothing is connecting whatever is remaining afterwards to two and one except this link, right? We only have one link from a node to everything afterwards. If you just destroy this link, how will I destroy this link, by the way? Right? What I will do that may destroy this link? Yeah. Exactly. If I just said, okay, I want this one to be after two. What should I do is two root next equal my new node, right? Just have done this, done, right? What you should do before is make this node, this one, its next will be three now, right? So before moving this link, make sure, make sure, so what, what has been done here is make sure before removing this link, which is between two and three, make sure your next is pointing at three, and then now it's okay to remove this link and make it point to 2.5. That's very important here. Good? Okay, is there any question? So let's go back to the code then. How do, we, how do we do this, right? So we go through our list one by one until we find our target, which was our two in the example. We create the new node using LL node node equal new, ln node, whatever. And then by saying here dot next, now we are doing the first step, right? Which is making the next of the new node pointing to the next of the target node, right? Now, and just now, it's safe to make your target node next is the new one, right? Which we do here, here dot next equal node. And then we just return. Good. Is there any question here? So now let's do the last one. I want to delete. So you take a value as an input and you want to delete the node that holds this value, the first node that holds this value. How should I do this? If we know the insertion after a node, then it's very simple here, right? Because what you want to do is you go through your list one by one, assume that you want to, in fact, we have, we have, used, we have special cases, but forget about the special cases for now. If you want to do something in the middle, then you go through the list one by one, search for the value, and once you find your value, it's just enough to make your previous node pointing to the next node by dropping the one in the middle, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Assume now I want to delete two, right? So assume I want to delete two. I have to identify the predecessor of two and the successor of two and make the predecessor of two dot next equal to the successor, right? By just doing this, you don't need to do anything for the node itself. Why this is the case? This is a bonus mark. Why by just doing this, by changing the next of the predecessor, I have deleted the two. Exactly. So by just having no reference at all to an object, it's a general rule that you guys need to understand. In C, we needed to free any pointer we create ourselves. Any memory reservation you make, you have to free yourself, right? In Java, it's different. The garbage collector automatically, every period of time, checks 
if there is an object that has no reference at all, it's going to remove this object by default. By just removing the reference from two, here, two, nothing is pointing to two at all, right? It's okay that two points to something, it doesn't matter. If nothing is pointing to two, that means no one is using two, and the garbage collector is going to delete it from the memory after some time, right? So by just removing the reference from a node, or let's say it by just removing the reference to a node, you drop this node. Good? One problem with the deletion here that we didn't face in the insertion is, is what? What extra we need to do that we didn't do, do before in the traverse or the insertion? What do you think? How we should implement this thing? I just told you that you need to identify the predecessor and the successor. And by just identifying the predecessor, changing the next, then you are done. But how I would I identify the predecessor? In a singly linked list, you don't have a pointer back. You don't have a reference back, right? Everything is just pointing ahead, right? Or what is after. So how to get this? Any idea? Exactly, this is one thing you can do, is instead of checking the value that I'm in right now, you check the value of your next. That means, once you find your value, you are not standing in your current one that you want to drop, you are standing in the one before, right? That's one possible clever way. There is a more naive way, which is identifying or defining, declaring two references instead of one, right? And you keep moving both together. If the one that is ahead is pointing to your current that you want to delete, the one before it is pointing to the one that is before, right? But now you are add one extra variable, good? But what you said is completely correct. Do you guys have any question here? Yeah. What he said is, instead of when I traverse my list looking for a node that I want to delete, and instead of looking for here the value, which means you will only find your next dot value, which means you will find your value while your reference is standing one node behind, right? Make sense? And in this case, if you find your value, that means the value that is next to you, and now you can change your own point. Okay? Okay. So let's stop here, and then we continue next time. Thank you.